Good morning, everyone. Uh, and now for something very different. <laughs> um, I am Stan. I am part of the public policy team on the uh, for the foundation. Um, I describe my job as uh, trying to convince Congress not to break Wikipedia while they're actively trying to break Facebook and TikTok. Um, you might not think that we have the Wikipedia has a lot in common with those two, but uh, when you come to writing legislative definitions, it's actually not not all that different. Um, that that creates problems for us. Um, so so I want to sort of tell you why I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you today, and then I'll then I'll tell you. Um, I want to I want to raise awareness about the the some of the issues that uh, the global advocacy team is working on now, and we expect to be working on in the future. Uh, these are sort of global regulatory trends that have been building for a while. Uh, some of them are reaching uh, sort of critical mass, as it were, um, but they're not they're not going away. Um, so we're going to continue working on these things into the future. Um, and so I want you all to to sort of be aware when you're seeing news coverage of uh, court cases against TikTok or Facebook um, laws trying to uh, hold tech more accountable. Um, but often those laws also also reach our projects. Um, and so it's also try to tie sort of my talk today into the crossroads theme. Um, you know, I, I see these trends as sort of a, a manifestation of of change, right? As web usage generally has has grown and changed over the last couple of decades, um, and the power of these large platforms has grown more concentrated. Uh, people and governments are sort of rethinking their relationships to the technology that we use every day. Um, and, and as a result, we're starting to focus more on the on the negative aspects of, of the tech that we use uh, compared to sort of the, you know, the early 2000s, we were all thinking, hooray for the internet, right? It's, it's such an amazing tool. We're going to use it for all these amazing things. 20 years later that we're now seeing uh, sort of a, a, a backlash against some of the harms that we're seeing. Um, so I'm going to talk about three, uh, three examples today, uh, kids safety online, content moderation and, and deep fakes. And these are all somewhat intertwined. Um, you'll see as we, as we go through the, the talk, um, so kids safety, what, what are the problems that we're talking about? They, they fall into three, three major buckets, um, regulators, lawmakers, uh, and parents are concerned about, uh, kids being harmed by access to certain kinds of content online, right? They see things that either inspire them to do something or otherwise impact their, their mental health. Um, they're concerned that kids are being harmed by interactions with other people online. Um, this takes the form of cyberbullying, other sort of negative impacts from, from talking to folks online. Um, and then they're actually uh, concerned about some of the design features of the, the social media feeds often, right? This is either endless scroll, autoplay, things that keep kids sort of hooked on, on the platforms. Um, and there are all sorts of uh, claims um, that, that kids' mental health is impacted negatively by, by these things. Um, as far as I can tell, most of the research doesn't actually show a clear causation between social media usage and negative impacts on mental health. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, lots, of, lots of claims based on, on that idea. Um, so where are they, where are they talking about this? Uh, it turns out all over the world. Um, this is a, a global phenomenon. Uh, the European Union and the UK both enacted laws in the last couple of years, uh, not specifically aimed at kids' safety, but that have parts of them dedicated to, to that idea. Um, here in the United States, both at the federal level and the state level, uh, we're seeing laws coming around all the time. Um, at the state level, some have been enacted already. Um, many are being challenged in court. At the federal level, there are lots of uh, sort of bills floating around Congress. Um, some of them have gotten quite a bit of traction, one called the Kids Online Safety Act in particular, you may have seen in the news. Um, it may or may not pass at the end of this year. Uh, so there's, uh, it could go either way. Um, so so what, what's in these laws? Um, a number of things. Uh, the most concerning of which is is sort of age restriction, age based restrictions to content or to services. Um, there are sort of 
heightened responsibilities apply to platforms uh, with respect to children. That, of course, implies that the platforms know who is a minor and who is not. Um, so in, to, in order to treat kids differently online, they have to say, you know, are you 18? Right now, they do that through a sort of self-attestation, right? You click a button that says, I'm 18, you enter your birthday, maybe. Uh, but there's no sort of way for them to actually know if you're lying or not, right? Um, so lawmakers are trying to raise the bar there, trying to get them to prove, to, to have a, a higher standard of proof. Um, this often means showing your uh, government-issued ID and doing a sort of biometric scan to make sure that your face matches your government ID. This is highly privacy invasive. Obviously, there are other methods that are equally sort of privacy problematic. Um, and so we, uh, uh, if anyone wants to talk to me or Selena about our opposition to this, um, there's, we, we, of course, don't want to collect any more data about anyone than we have to. Uh, we want kids to be able to access the platform. We want everyone to be able to access the platform with no, no friction. Um, so we're, we're sort of leery of these laws coming around. Um, some of the other things inc include uh, parental controls to let sort of parents say what they can access when kids can access it. Um, and then uh, actually design mandates to say you cannot have endless scroll on a thing that a kid is using. Um, you can't have autoplay. Uh, you can't collect data to then sell them ads, right? And that's ostensibly a good thing, but it also involves more data collection to find out if you're a kid or not, right? So it's a, a sort of double-edged sword there. Um, and then some of the, the uh, undesirable effects on our platform and others include a sort of chilling effect, right? If you are know you're having to be uh, surveilled by who you are when you're accessing a, accessing a platform, it makes people less likely to read certain articles or to contribute to them. Uh, we This is a documented sort of impact. Uh, there's studies showing that people actually don't go to certain articles when they think people are watching what they're doing all the time. All right. Uh, before I go further, I should say I'm not trying to scare everyone here. I tend to be doom and gloom when I talk about these things, but I will offer a ray of hope at the end of this talk, so stay tuned. Um, content moderation is something you all do as editors, right? You are deciding what content stays up, what is appropriate for the encyclopedia, uh, what order to put things in, how to structure the articles, all of this is content moderation. Um, this has become a highly contentious subject uh, sort of across the political spectrum here in the United States and elsewhere in the world. Uh, there are allegations of political bias of one kind or the other. There are problems with disinformation. Uh, lawmakers want to sort of hold the people making these decisions more accountable for what they say or how, how they decide to structure the content on a platform. Um, and then there's just general fear of the algorithm, right? And we here at Wikipedia have automated processes to, to make content moderation decisions, um, but lots of platforms do. And so there's there's sort of the, the mystery of what's going on in the black box of the algorithm uh, generates mistrust. Where are they talking about this? Again, this is a global, a global problem. Um, here in the United States, uh, several laws, both at the federal level and at the state level, getting at uh, what decisions are made about content online. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation took part in challenging some of these laws in Texas and Florida that would have required uh, a neutral viewpoint with respect to political ideals, but that means that anyone could put anything on a sort of political candidate's page and that would have to stay there. You could not remove it because of political whatever. Um, so remedies that lawmakers have proposed to address content moderation and the problems they see with it include uh, increasing liability for decisions made about content. Cool. Five minutes. I'll try to go faster. Um, they have pushed for transparency mandates. Obviously, almost every edit on every project here is publicly available and seems very transparent. However, when we have to start having to report these things to the government, one, it creates weird incentives about what decisions you make about uh, content. Two, the way we structure and record the edits doesn't necessarily map to how lawmakers are thinking about this. They're often tailoring their uh, mandates to sort of top-down decision-making uh, based on sort of one set of policies administered by the, the centralized uh, platform, right? Facebook and TikTok and others are sort of 
running the show rather than a decentralized model uh, like we have. And so it just creates a problem for us reporting wise. Uh, all right, zipping through deep fakes. This is sort of one specific problem in content moderation. Um, as the AI tools have gotten better and better, the sort of uh, photo realism has, has increased dramatically. It gets harder to tell what's, what's real and what's not. Um, there are both problems from disinformation perspective and then also sort of abuse of, uh, you know, abusive imagery. Um, and then a lot of like actors and musicians are concerned about being replaced by sort of AI bots, right? Um, so it's a, a sort of wide spectrum of concerns here. Um, this one is just catching on. It's not uh, as widespread as some of the other regulatory concerns, but it, it is happening around the world. Um, what the remedies look like here are something called in the United States, a right of publicity. This exists at the state level. It says that you have a form of intellectual property over your own likeness, and you can say when it gets used, when it doesn't get used. Um, there's also sort of increased liability for hosting deep fakes or for allowing someone to create them and share them. Um, one of the bills I want to call everyone's attention to is called the No Fakes Act. This is at the federal level. Uh, it would actually create a notice and takedown system. We already have this in the copyright world. For those of you that know copyright, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act says if we receive a notice alleging that some piece of content uh, infringes someone's copyright, we have to take it down. Um, this would create the same thing, but for imagery. Um, and so you can see how that would that could be a problem for any article where there's a politician's picture. They could allege that that is a deep fake of them, and we would have to remove it, whether it is or not. Um, all right, I want to stop there on the doom and gloom and say one of our uh, missions at the Global Advocacy Team is to to try to convince legislatures that it would be better to create something good than fight something bad. And so we're trying to offer them ideas and proposals to say, let's make a, an internet that we want, where we, people can share knowledge freely, can have projects like Wikipedia safely, um, and, and focus on that rather than fighting with that all the time. Um, all right. There's a list of resources. This is all linked in the uh, proposal page. I think I have maybe one minute left for questions. If anyone has any, talk to me now or after the show. I'm here all week. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm just wondering, like, as an estimate, how much time do you think you spend on defense versus offense, like defending or stopping mm -hmm. bad laws, which is like the cost of division? Mostly defense. Um, we try to do offense at the same time, right? We try to add, always add that in the conversation, but it, it's uh, not to be skeptical. Politicians like a problem to solve, and so it is. It is rarely that they're like, "Let's do a good thing." It's always like, "Let's try to fight these bad guys," right? And so it's it's far more defense. Yeah. Anyone else? Just one of the comments on the fake quote. Uh, better to get something good than fight something bad. I was just kind of curious, like, what are they kind of looking to it? But one of the frameworks for something good are you working towards or advocating for? Great question. Um, so this is happening in the European Union currently, and I'm trying to bring something uh, to the U.S. called the Digital Knowledge Act. Um, it is a sort of suite of proposals to make uh, it easier to share knowledge online, essentially, and to access knowledge online. That means making public, asking publishers or requiring them to make their publications be more available, more accessible online. Um, it goes to libraries and ebook lending. Um, the publishers often have a a tight control over how much it costs to get an ebook online, and they they control that market. So it's it's things like that, right? So just make it better to share information. Do that. Um, I think I'm out of time. I'm here. I'm Stan. Come find me and talk to me. Thank you.